feels like at some point this is going to be like an AI meeting, so I might as well try now. Um, so my plan was to talk a little bit about type hints, what they are and why they're fun, or why they're useful and why you do them for profit. Um, I haven't really prepared a big presentation because I figured this is a thing that it goes best in code. And if you at any point, uh, first off, can everyone see this properly? Should I make anything bigger? I'll take the note, the silence for yes, it's okay. Um, so if there's any questions as we go along, please answer, uh, please raise your hand and ask it. Uh, we'll walk it through. And I was figuring that towards the end, if you have any particular issue, thing you would like to solve with type hints, we could walk it through together, because I could probably talk through examples for a very long time, and I don't want to bore you all. So it's better if we get some practical examples. So first off, what are type hints? So one of the things that Python doesn't do compared to other languages is that you don't know for sure that whatever thing you put into a variable is necessarily of a particular type. So if I type in foo, I'm putting one, we know now because we see that it is a number. But if I go somewhere else, I don't necessarily know that foo is a number. Yeah? Well, the question is I'm probably going to be very scratchy in this recording, but ooh, well, it works. Um, so yeah, so we know here because, this is, because we can see that it's a number. But we can also do from Python 3.6, 3, 3 and onwards, we can do add a colon. We know now it's an int. And we now told Python that this is supposed to be an integer. And wherever you see this variable, you can expect it to respond to whatever messages that you can do on an int, like bit length and so on. Now, most of this just kind of works when you're working in the same file as you defined it. But it doesn't necessarily work when you go outside the current file. So if we take some examples here, so if you want to add something together, so this is my little add method that just takes one and two, puts them together, and I want to see what goes with it. This method hasn't been configured to support type hinting, so if I try to do anything with it, it will just go, oh, so there's nothing I can do. I have no idea what's going on here. But I have this thing here that supports type hints, where I support said that the first thing is an integer, the second thing is an integer, and it returns an integer. And when I do a period here, IntelliJ or PyCharm will tell me that it's, it's an integer and despite not being in the same file, which can get really convenient when you get into a larger code base and you don't even know how many layers through you have and it's passed through. So super, super convenient. And you can also get warnings in your editor saying that, oh, so you expected this to be an integer, but you got a string instead you probably want to fix that because this is going to give you an unexpected behavior unless you fixed it. But in that case, you should have a type in saying that you support multiple types. And uh, here's as well, like you wouldn't support an int. Whenever you take an int, you shouldn't support a float. But we'll also later see that you can pass in an integer whenever someone asks for a float because that's normal py Python type hinting. It just supports that out of the box. And uh, so yeah. Now, another thing that's fairly common in Python is that we have default arguments. And what that is is just that my, my examples, by the way, are going to be extremely contrived just because I want to show how the actual type hints work and not so much uh, advanced Python. So I have here a, a function that takes in a name and then optionally provides some kind of greeting and then you writes that, writes that out. Um, so this is F, F uh, formatted strings, which are available in Python 3.6. Fantastic. You don't have to do the annoying format syntax anymore. So also a nice thing to, to know about. And what I've done here is I just said that I optionally take in something that is a text. And by default, that's the value none. And then I just check it. So here, it just works I would expect. It returns hello, Bjorn. And I change it to howdy, howdy, Bjorn. And down here, I get a warning that this is supposed to be an integer, but I, uh, it's supposed to be a string, but I got an integer. But because it's Python, it will actually run. It won't be an issue because uh, like, it will just convert that into a string and deal with it. Stupid question. Where's the warning? Is it printed out on the console, or is it just the IDE? So you can do it on the IDE. You can also do it in the console. So that's a good, I was going to go to that. So on the, ID, on the console, there's a, there's a little tool called MyPy. And MyPy is the type hinting engine that, you, that Python uses. 
So if you do install MyPy, you can then run it against a file. So if I run it against my example 2 Py, it will tell me that on line 10, the second argument to the greeting has an incompatible type int expected optional string. And uh, this, you can run this in your entire code base. And um, now I haven't prepared this because it's in the package and it's all nice up. So I can't run the entire thing. But so that's how that kind of works. Sorry, my pie. Uh, no, it's a static a static checker, so it doesn't run your code. It just runs through the uh, the AST and checks. So you don't have to worry about it performing side effects in your code. Uh, another one, union arguments, which is sometimes you have objects that takes any of a certain amount of types. You know, duct typing. You want to support anything that kind of looks like this thing, yeah. And so here's an example using a class that represents a longitude and latitude, a, a, pos a position on a map. And uh, this thing supports either a float or a decimal, which is a fairly reasonable thing because maybe you need to have more precision somewhere or your database returns that or whatever. And uh, the way you define that is you mark it as a union. And then you say that I take a union of float or a decimal. And as long as I get either of them, I'll just accept that. That's will be fine. Uh, I do recommend that you convert it into one of the types when you save it internally, though, so you're consistent in your external behavior. So that's a good idea. And uh, there should be no. All right, it doesn't know what decimal is. OK, then we'll fix, deal with that some other day. Now. Is there a difference between equals and colon? Yes, so the colon is an indication that this, this is using a type hint. And the equals is uh, what it is. So this is a typo. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the problem when you don't really run your code, you just write it. This is the way I wish it worked at work as well. But there, I always get caught. Um, so, uh, so that's the union argument. So, Looking at this thing, though, it gets kind of gnarly when you want to work with this, because you're doing this in multiple places, and these can get really long. So if you're taking in a function, for instance, you might say that I want to take any function that takes two integers and return an integer, uh, which looks a little bit something like this. And if you want to do that in a couple of places, you, you pretty soon get kind of bored. So what you can do instead is you can make alias types. And uh, the way they work is that you simply you, you put in a name, and then you define it as part of that. And then you can just use that name wherever you would use that anyways. And then the hinting engine will tell you that expect a union of these values, and then give you a warning from that. So now I have a feeling that my pi will complain about missing decimal. Nope. So here you can see it from the command line. So you can run this on your CI server. So generics. Um, if you've used any lang like Java or anything like this, you'll soon realize that it's kind of useful. That there are certain types of problems where it's nice to have the types because I'm supposed to be kind of consistent in what I do. In Python, I can just put in whatever I want. So in this case, like take you have a stack, which is something that you put things in on, and then when you remove them, you remove them from the back. The stack doesn't care whether it takes in a string or an integer or a Pokemon or whatever, as long as it is handled in the same way. So you can make a generic stack by defining a type variable that you can name whatever you want, in this case t, because that's what people usually name a single type variable. And then whenever you initialize it, you know that you're always going to get out something of type t. Now, the sad part here is that IntelliJ or PyCharm doesn't actually support this yet, so I can't get any type hinting or help or any help from IntelliJ. It will just use it as if you would normally Pyth in Python. But MyPy will at least uh, give you warnings if you're using it incorrectly. And uh, that will at least still help you catch errors. Now, some of the things that 
if you're building larger code bases in Python, uh, especially if codes, code that has been around for a long time, you probably know that a lot of your data is just dictionaries. <laughs> and hopefully it has some keys, and hopefully it's going to be fine. But every so often you're going to be like, oh, so I'm adding this movie. Here's the director, Steven Spielberg, in year something something. Except that this, that's not a movie. That's a director and a year of something. And he probably wasn't born then, because he's definitely older. So it would be nice if this also could tell me that, oh, as I'm inputting this data, I know that it is wrong. Whatever I'm passing in here is never going to be the type of dictionary that I want. And you can do that. You can use something called typed dicts, which is part of MyPy extensions and something that is probably coming out with Python 3.7, but it is supported in the recent version of MyPy. And the way you create one of these is that you can create a class that derives from type dict, and then you just provide um, parameters and then the type that it uses. And that way you can say, wherever you get with a movie, you know that these values are going to be there, or you're supposed to know that they're there as long as people are using MyPy and following through. Uh, there's also a different syntax you can use for this if you would rather do it, but Personally, I like this kind of class syntax because I think it reads nicer, but it's nice to know about. And if you... If you're using a key that is not in your, in your class, it's going to warn you with my file? Um, I don't think it will warn you if you use a, a key that's not there. Uh, there are some settings. I haven't explored all of them. It will definitely warn you if something is missing that you expect to be there. And I would say that's generally, these are more the structured type of hints that you can get, are more towards, does it, do I live up to the minimal requirements that I'm asking of my code, rather than, is it only this? Yeah, so if you're doing a type with a common key, it's going to warn you because it's not there. Exactly. Yeah, so, it's fine. so in this case, let's just check that. So I don't have a hilo uh, in my definition, so hopefully it won't complain about that, so we confirm what it is. Ah, actually, it is saying that it's an extra. So that was different from what I expected. Does it work with uh, mean tuple? I actually don't know. And I don't have interest, I can't check it up. But uh, I think that, yeah, I, I sorry, I don't know. The, there is a lot of support for the built-in types that are in Python. and. Uh, there's also the discoverability of what hints you have is quite good. So if we go into... Does this only apply to American movies? No, you can use any movie you want. Like Bollywood stuff? Absolutely. With Python 3, you have full UTF-8 support, so you can have any name you want. Thank you. Including emojis, um, but not in the names. Uh, so there is support for name tuples. So the exact usage of that I'm not entirely sure of. Oh, it seems to be similar. Give it uh, like that. <coughs> and uh, so another thing I wanted to talk mention is structured typing, which is if anyone has used Go, one of the really nice thing in Golang is that if you define an interface saying that I want to take an object that has this method on it, I don't care what it is. I don't, you don't have to define it anywhere in your type system. As long as it has the method, in this case, right, takes a, takes a string and returns nothing, I'll just accept it. It doesn't matter. I, it, I don't care what it does under the hood. And that's, that's kind of how I like, how would like this thing to work. Sadly, this is not the way Python works by default. Well, actually, it is true. Python does work like that by default, and if you don't know about it, it will go boom, which also is good, but it can make it harder to figure out where something went wrong when you're trying to f track down a bug. So in, in uh, typing extensions, there is something called a protocol that you can use that you define that, uh, uh, let's see, <coughs> a protocol which says that any method that takes a write and it's a text that returns nothing that is allowed in here, and then that way you won't complain about it. So if I do my pi, it will warn me that my second object here that has wrote instead of write is not actually a writer class. And when I'm going to pass that in, it will go boom for me, which is not what I wanted. And I could just run this code, I would get the same warning, but 
if you're living in a large code base and you don't know, you may not necessarily know all the deep bowels of it, what's going on, this might catch you some bugs. This It doesn't, the, the, the thing is that the, the protocols don't really provide anything apart from the fact that you're just saying that I want an object that kind of looks like this. And then MyPy will tell you whether it's there, where the object has that method or these methods that you asked for. The, uh, ty the type in system in Python are, is heavily reliant on abstract ba base classes. So they do encourage you to use abstract base classes, and then you can do um, at method required, I think it is, and that will provide you with race un uh, initial, um, not implemented error. And you just give it a pass as a method body. And most of the uh, built-in type ins are also dependent on abstract base classes in some way I don't quite understand, but they all use them, and that way you can implement an iterable which will just work anywhere and anywhere. Python asks for an iterable, as long as you've implemented it correctly, it will just work. So that's kind of how that goes. And uh, so yeah, so that's the, the main types of hints I figured would be a good idea to talk about and why it's useful. And the second part is, so say that you're all blown away by this and want to start doing this. But if you're anything like where I'm at, you have a large code base that's been living there for a couple of years. And uh, putting this on is going to give you just so many warnings that this is not going to be worth it, because you're just going to be spending weeks trying to figure out where everything comes from. Well, it's optional. You don't have to get started with it. The way you tell MyPy that I want to see type ins is that you define the return method. And then it will go into the method and check what's going on. So if you want to start somewhere small, like this is some new code that I want to get started with, you can just add in that this is where I start. I add a return value. Now MyPy will check it whenever I ask what's going on. So here we see that we have two. The string is not an integer. A float is not an integer. Uh, we turn it off. There's nothing. A sweet silence. Yes? Is the return type also checking the returns inside the function? Yes, it is. It is. Uh, so if I were to say that this returns uh, a string or text, because we also want to support Python 2, um, because in Python 3 you always use a string, but in Python 2 you probably want to use a Unicode and uh, so on. Um, so now it's, now it's telling us here it's yellow because it expected it to be a return value, and there's no return value yet. So if I return now 10, it will tell me that this 10 is an integer instead of a string. So if I go hello, it will then be happy. And what happens if you return with a variable yeah. uh, which was not used with this uh, type in the code previously? So it could have multiple types. Yeah. It depends on the code block. So here in this method, I return something that it doesn't know what the type is going to be. So if I take this thing, it doesn't, IntelliJ, for instance, doesn't know. So if I do return A here, it will just assume that it's fine because it doesn't know, it doesn't have any hinting information. But if I instead define a B that's a 2, and I do that, it will go yellow because it, it knows that it's not there. Now, the the hinting engine that's built into PyCharm and the hinting engine that's used in MyPy are actually different. So some of these things are going to work better on the command line. Some of them are going to work in the editor. The advantage of having it built into your editor is, of course, that you can see it really quickly what you have to change. Yeah? And some of the extra nice benefits is that if you want to change your, your method signatures or you want to rename something, it has a much better idea of where everything is used because it actually knows that this variable has been tagged to be of this class type. So when I'm three levels deep in some method call, it still knows that this is a type writer. So when I rewrite that from wrote to write, it will just do it. So it's, it's really powerful and really kind of allows you to do Python like you do in Java or C Sharp or something where you, you always know what everything is. And this has dramatically sped up my development experience this year. Yes? Is there a big difference between text and STR? Um, 
Yeah, not not here. Uh, this is mostly I'm doing it because of Python 2. So in Python 2, text is, a, is an alias to Unicode. Okay. Whereas if I did string and it, we were using this in Python 2, we would think it would be the, a, a binary type or like okay. equivalent to. So it's for compatibility between Python 2 and 3? Yes. So I just gotten into the habit of always writing it like this because we have parts of the code that I write that are Python 2, some with Python 3. And that's also something else that, sorry? Uh, nice. Yeah, it is. Uh, and there's also that you don't have to do this all in, like with this syntax. If you're on Python 3, you can actually provide uh, your hints like this. And uh, it will just, it will also pick them up and it will work. It's a little bit annoying because it's a comment, but it will work. So that's at least something so you can get going. And whenever you would expect that, that, oh, this variable is an integer, so you just add type type. And if we go into um, the uh, position class, for instance, where I had like this, you can either put, in, like, the, put them like I have here, or you can do, uh, and then, because you can get, they can re get really, really long, especially if you do them inline. So all of this also works in Python too, which is really good because it makes it easier if uh, if you want if you want to do a Python two to three conversion project. I feel like this is also one of those things that can help you out because it's easier to find where everything is. And um, yeah, and refactorings, good stuff. Do you get a lot of resistance from the team? Few still do get. Luckily, I got uh, management buy-in. <laughs> so, um, the no, the the advantage I felt like the when I got in there and I wanted to introduce this, the my team was they weren't they didn't use any of this stuff. They they were using Atom with some basic Python plugin, and so they couldn't easily jump to code. They didn't know anything. So, just showing them like if you add type pins and you're trying to understand that this thing that you defined here that lives in a separate project in the same giant monorepo that we have is where it's defined. And you, because you've done the type hinting stuff, you can actually understand your code really quickly. They really, they bought into it kind of quick. The only annoying bit is getting them to actually write it because remembering and getting used to it and not wanting to force all code on CI yet to not go green if uh, you haven't added the type hints. So overall, no. The, uh, hopefully, most people that see this, they, they see that there is some kind of value to it. And I'm kind of curious, like, what do you all think? Do you think that would type pins be able to add any kind of value to the work that you do on a day-to-day -day basis? Or is it more like, how, how would you document the parameter types now, since you type pins, you don't need to do documentation of parameters? So I don't have to. That's true. The, um, I still would, though. So there are types of, there are classes where I define this is the argument that I take in, here it is. I would still define the type because it's still useful and when I write it out with things. And the way it would look like, um, so if I use Python 2 for instance, I would do my hints like this and then I would do my doc string below because that's the syntax that MyPy and uh, IntelliJ expects it to be in and then you would just add your definitions to your comments. So I expect this to be with the difference that I usually use the, um, the Google style. So I don't actually know if this format is correct now. But so the, yeah, no, I, I would still do that. And that's actually how I started out with type hinting. Because with IntelliJ, or PyCharm at least, if you put your types in the, uh, in the documentation string, that will also give you all the benefits of, oh, is this the right type? Can I do the auto-completion on it? which is also why so much of the scientific Python stuff kind of works. I was using uh, Pandas the other day and discovered, that, or PyArrow, and discovered that basically everything gives me type hints out of the box because all the documentation is written with the hints, which is fantastic. <coughs> yes? Is there a convenient way to enforce these typings in runtime? And on the other hand, is it a good idea to do so? So there is, there is no enforcing in runtime. So the you can do is instant checks, but like for, for protocols, the, the structured types, there are some ways you can make it kind of work with its, in, with inst, its instance and so on, but yeah, it's a, it's a little bit botchy. 
the, you can, but I would, I would suggest sticking to more traditional duct typing hints, ways of doing it. So if I want to be sure that like, I want a writer and I want to get type hints to help me out, but if I want to make sure and then if it's not there, either blow up normally, like I tried to call this method on your object, you don't have it, boom. Huh? Or do a check and say that like, does this, has, do, has, do this object have this attribute? And is it callable? So, uh, and then just work it from there. That that would be my my suggestion to do instead, and because that way you don't have to really worry about like you get some nice way of describing it and a little bit better this idea of how you want your code to work. Because sadly, it, it it is still not Java or something like that where it will just refuse to compile. It will happily compile. It will happily go boom on you in production. So, and in my world, trying to avoid and going boom is production is part of the big benefits of using type hinting. Yeah. Is there some command line tool to crawl the entire code base and tell you what hints are missing? Yes, so this is also MyPy. So I haven't gone through MyPy completely and figured out all the switches for using it. One of the things is that you're supposed to put it at like your package, and I don't have a package because I just made a directory with a bunch of example files. So it, it does absolutely support it. I, I just sadly don't know the exact switches for doing it. So you could make it part of free commit hook or whatever. Oh, you absolutely. You code, but you forgot to type in. So I'm not exactly this computer. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So that, it's definitely something to do. And there's also a lot of uh, configuration you can do for how it should follow up, which, which type of hints it should warn about, whether it should require it for new code, and so on. But yeah, I haven't gone through it. The documentation is actually quite nice. It's relatively straightforward to get into type hints. So if you search for MyPy and uh, go through the, the peps, it's, you'll have a really good understanding of how it works. Is this the only way to uh, like, uh, type Because in the past, uh, what some people do is uh, use separators. I didn't know that there was a decorator version before. No, no, it's not a decorator. It's like they write their own decorator, and basically the decorator just taking like a list of like, uh, arguments of type, and then you know, you run the type before you run the actual you, dec you you wrap it around the actual function you want to run. But the decorator function basically. Oh, you mean like a, like a cert int or something like yeah. that? And they would just make sure that it's an int. So I said it doesn't give you any of that. If you want that type of checking, you have to do it yourself. That that's just a it's just it's just a hint. It's here to support uh, static analysis and making better I editors and IDEs. It's not there to make things faster, or more secure in production. Now, if you you can use it and you can extend it in your own code, like this is a critical path or something to help you do that, but it's still down to you personally to get it done. Um, sorry. Oh yeah, um, is there a particular reason why you use optional and square brackets text when you're already specifying the URL? Um, in this particular case, just because I wanted to show what it looked like, um, I wanted a contrived example. The, um, what you, why, why you would do it is that, so in this case, I had an optional, optional with a value of none, and while none is absolutely a valid value, I want it to be that if you don't give me a none, I want you to give me a string or a text. So that's why it, uh, it was looking like that. Uh, there we are. So yeah, so if, it, if, I had, if I had set this hello here instead, I wouldn't have to because it would understand that it, either it will be a string or it will be hello. It will, it will be the string you passed in or it will be hello. And then uh, my pie is smart enough that there's no need to define it. It will just take care of it itself. Yes? Yeah. Since you own this example, and that's a so can, can you do the type to return radiance directly? Sorry? To return radiance directly. Um, so the radiance... Because the reason conventionally can't do that, but in this particular case, <laughs> can you do that? Because if you are doing a whole lot like for the whole world. So that is a lot quicker. Yep. Um, so radiance would, it depends on how you want to represent your radiance. So you want to do it as an. I don't want to you know, do the division, the division. Yeah. So normally you would have a method 
that either converts it to a radian or whatever. And then the, the question is, do you, want, do you want it to be a float or do you want it to be a class that in turn wraps something else and that's how you work it? Yeah. So you have to def decide on how do you want it to look like. So for instance, if I want it to be a class, so yep. yeah, can you show that? Yep, absolutely. Let me go up to the position <coughs> example. So say that we, now I am not entirely sure how the radian example would look like. So let's just assume the most basic thing that I can think of, which looks like this. Uh, and I expect it to have to be a float. Uh, well. And then if I said in here, I want to convert it. Would then return a instance of a class radian, and that way you you would work it out. Is there a way to like monkey patch the parent libraries that don't support typings? And you have like this one function that you always call, and you want to make sure that your code knows what's to return value. You can. I have had mixed um, success with doing it. Uh, so there is. There is something called a type schedule that generally gets installed by default. And the way it works is that you create a file that with the same name as the library you want to, want to uh, add to. And then you provide stubs that looks like the method you want to use. So I was using it for the responses library, for instance. And responses has a lot of methods that go something like this. And the way you would define it is that when this Response when it gets back, it returns a uh, connection. So you would just create a file with a lot of stubs like this, and then you would tell the Py, uh, you, can, you can tell MyPy that here's my stub folder, and uh, this exact syntax I don't remember. But you can absolutely do it. In theory, you're supposed to be able to, pi to uh, distribute it on PyPy as well. But last time I tried it, I couldn't upload it because it didn't get bundled. But I think they might have fixed that now. So, yes? How would you do a return type hint for a constructor method? Um, I tried that and I couldn't, couldn't find a good way to do it. So, could you give an example? Uh, so, it's a class and it has a constructor method. So, it's a, a class method returning a new instance ah, of the class. Yes. So, so, because it's defined inside, it doesn't accept uh, the return type. Yeah. Um, so, let's call this new because why not? Um, so, the way you do that is that you do it as a string. And that way, it knows that uh, because it, it's it's very common that sometimes you have to refer to the class you're in, but it's not defined, and otherwise you have to import it, and that gets complicated. So you can do it as a string. And so this one is a pure PyCharm thing, or is it also accepted by MyPy? Also accepted by my, by MyPy. It's sad, it's the it's the default way to work around this. Okay. And the same thing goes that if you have like a nested structure, because yeah, it, it's absolutely common to do, and that's the way it is. Yes, I would say yes. The, there's a little bit. Inheritance has, has its own little issues. Like, I've found that sometimes, at least, PyCharm is a little bit bad at telling me that, oh, so you inherited from this and you're trying to call this method. For some reason, it messes up my inheritance chain and thinks method that, it, that don't exist exist. I don't know exactly what that's about. It mostly works the way you expect, though. So, any other questions? Yes? So, since functions are classes and objects uh, in Python, uh, is there a way to retrieve the type in, in runtime? So, if I want to know what was the type in for this? That is a great question. I am pretty sure it, it works because mm -hmm. it's supposed to be as part of the commenting system and the metadata. I have never tried it. But I'm pretty sure that it works. But um, sorry for that. So, anything else? <coughs> Otherwise, <coughs> yes. Is it downward compatible? Yes. Um, so, if you use the comment-based version, it works in any version of Python that you can run MyPy on. And uh, MyPy itself doesn't care what Python version you use. It needs. I think MyPy is Python 3.3 or so ab and above. 
but I don't think MyPy needs to be running the same version of Python that you're checking. So it, uh, the, now I haven't used it on Python 2.6 code because luckily that those days are behind me, but it definitely works in 2.7. Cool. Thanks a lot. I think that was the talk with the most questions ever. <laughs> that was my I'm goal. Uh, on Facebook and have a lot of pictures, so if anyone has more questions, go to Facebook and you know, just ask him and he will get notification now because he's taking the post. Yep. Um, um, thanks for that. Please do ask questions if you have any more. I'll post some links tonight to uh, where you can read more about this.